Hello, Tiger Slash a second here, and today I have an unusual find. Uh, this is a Warhammer 40,000. Let me see if I can get a good angle. Fifth edition rulebook. Uh, it's the hardcover, and it is practically mint condition. And uh, it doesn't appear to have really been used. I found this at my local hobby shop for about $10. And I've never played 5th edition. This book came out long before I joined the hobby. It came out in 2008. And uh, I consider it to be probably one of the best finds that I've had in the hobby. Uh, at least recently. I want to go through here and uh, just, just kind of show you why. It starts off with one of my fam favorite pieces of art of the Emperor on the Golden Throne is absolutely brilliant and this is really why I love this book so much. We can see uh, just from the opening pages. Have a look at some of this art. Have a look at just how they portray. And this is this is very important because I, I want to make a point here. I want to make a point here about the, the different direction that the hobby has shifted, what I like, what I don't like, and um, what I deeply appreciate about this book. Uh, look at the models. Look at how they're portrayed. Look at how they're uh, composed in this setting, in this frame. Uh, if you're familiar with the more recent books that Games Workshop has put out, you'll notice a few things. First of all, all of the models are pristine. There's no excessive effects added. There's no Photoshop done, really. You've got the background, and that's pretty much it. The scenery is all very obviously um, just Games Workshop fair. All of the models are painted very well, but there's no smoke effects, there's no fading, there's no special effects going on in the background. Every model is very, very visible um, to anyone looking at this frame. Whenever they portray the table, like here, you'll notice that it is the table. They show the models. They show the models being played with. They show you how you might deploy with Games Workshop terrain. And they show the usefulness of like templates and stuff. But it's all very realistic. It's all stuff that you would see yourself if you were playing the game. And even the hobbying aspect. Once again, showing off the Ultramarines. There's no special effects. There's no fog. There's no no lens flare or anything like that. You just have a bunch of space marines. A predator, some terminators, some bikes. Everything's shown off. It's very nicely painted. But is, is there's sort of a, a quaintness to it. When we go further in we can see some of the some of the great artwork. And this is really what what drew me to this book is is beautiful beautiful artwork like this this is from the the orcs section and as you can see this was not done in some sort of like manga studio photoshop nonsense no this was hand drawn there's a there's a visual style to it it's like a comic book really um, it really captures the essence of the orcs it is very much, it, it's not meant to be taken literally, of course. This is all just, you know, interesting background and lore having to do with the orcs. And this, for the Eldar, this is one of my favorite pieces in the book. These beautiful double-sided, let me see if I can get a really good picture here. These beautiful two-page illustrations on this nice, glossy, paper bag. 
you can see the the wave serpent formation moving through the craft world you've got the, the craft world in the background there um, sort of fades off under this and it's a beautiful watercolor image this isn't something you know graphically generated on a computer this is someone that something that someone sat down and and planned out and painted by hand and most of all it's impressionist this isn't meant to be a literal depiction of a craft world it's meant to give you the impression of a craft world it's meant to spark your imagination what are these pyramids for what's with all these winding passageways what's with all these ships floating in the background what could these spires be you don't know they're not explained that's for you to explain that's for you to explore and find out on your own and of course these beautiful watercolors like this right here I absolutely adore the artwork in this book. You don't really find artwork like this in the 40k publications anymore. And that makes me sad. Look, here you've got the, uh, the layouts of the historical formations that were involved in this particular battle. You've got, ah, yes, one of John Blanche's masterpieces right in the center of the book, right there. Absolutely fantastic. I, this alone was worth the $10. I would, if I could, I would hang this on my wall. I absolutely love this. I know many people are um, critical of his piles of space marines kind of uh, style, but there is... There is a certain feeling that these kinds of works evoke. They're not meant to be an actual interpretation of what it's like um, in the 40K universe as far as the lore goes. It's meant to be something that uh, it, it's an imprint. It's a feeling of the grim darkness and the extremeness and the, the hyperbole and the ridiculousness all sort of boiled into one giant montage of just nothing but space marine black templars and it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful you see the, the decay of mankind behind them you see their their commanders urging on the lesser marines as they're fighting some unseen force that's just out of frame you see the 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 encroaching darkness on the outside of the frames it's absolutely beautiful and this is uh this is the exact kind of artwork that i that I truly adore in the 40k universe. This is the kind of artwork that stuck with me and inspired me when I was first starting out. This was what uh, I looked at. And this is what I saved as wallpapers, and this is what I you know, put on my phone and such when I was first starting out in the hobby, because I really liked the impression it gave. I didn't have to understand all of the lore and all of the background that went into this image. I could understand what was going on just by looking at it. And there is so much to look at. Every time I look at this picture, I see more stuff going on. And here too, these, these beautiful impressionist images. Like, obviously, these aren't literal images of a Mechanicus person or a, a Mechanicus cult member or a or an assassin or whatnot. These are impressions. These are watercolors. These are like... It's, it's difficult to describe. It's, it's not meant to be taken literally. It's much like the lore in the actual book itself. It's mostly just... Um, it's hearsay. It's uh, descriptions. It's an artist's depiction from a description of what this might be. And it's beautiful. And it lets you fill in the gaps as to how this might work uh, in reality, because obviously this isn't reality. It's fantasy in space, and um, each person's interpretation is going to be different, including this artist's. But you have all of this beautiful, beautiful art in this book. I, I love these watercolors so much. And these sketches too, these sketches are brilliant. 
Um, the, the endlessly increasing stairs to an unknown height where the golden throne lies. These archaic yet extremely futuristic machines that look like something H.R. Geiger would create. These uh, embellished and oversized pole axes and this medieval kind of uh, dress that these custodies and mechanicum are wearing. It evokes uh, the medieval kind of, you know, nonsense that the Imperium believes in alongside the high technology that is completely unfathomable, both by the players and by the people when living in the 41st millennium. Everything you need to know about the Imperium you can get just by looking at these pictures because they don't fully understand what's going on and you don't fully comprehend what's going on and that's okay because you're there to fill in the gaps with your own story and your own narrative some more absolutely beautiful artwork of holy terra i believe Maybe a hive city. Gorgeous. Gorgeous stuff. You can see. The this is one of my favorite things that comes out of these kinds of artworks. It's just the, the feelings that they evoke. You've got these massive tapestries, this forest of battle standards, and then in the middle is a solitary man. You can see the enormity of the Imperium and the deeds done by countless heroes around him. This kind of image truly evokes the sense of uh, smallness and the sense of unimportance that a single person has in the Imperium of Man in the 41st millennium. Centerfold of Space Marines of Death Watch. Some rules. Absolute brilliant. And this is this is something I truly appreciate as well. Whenever they're showing off pieces of uh, pieces of table work, or whenever they're showing off models, they always show them off within a certain context. They're all you know, displayed on a battlescape, on a six by four table, with the proper scenery. Everything is modeled. Everything is beautifully painted, but everything is also painted within a caliber that there's no Photoshop involved. There's no sort of special effects added. There's no um, post production done. Everything is as you would see it on the tabletop. Everything is adequately representative of the hobby itself. I mean, look look at all of this. It's, that could be anybody's rhino. And, and I'm not saying that post-production is necessarily a bad thing, but I really like how this is for an introduction for the, for the main rulebook, how this is a solid, beautifully illustrated representation of the hobby. And what can be done if you apply a lot of work and a lot of skill. These are absolutely beautiful battlescapes and beautiful armies. And it's just page after page of this. Once again, no smoke effects, no blurring, just a gorgeous picture of some Chaos Space Marines. And uh, I couldn't, oh, here we go, here's some more. There's no special effects added to the blown out rhino, it's merely missing a door, some, some cotton wool for the, uh, for the explosion there.
even in the clustered photos like this right here, where it's meant to show some action taking place, um, there's no sort of special effects used. It's all clearly a bunch of models on a very well modeled table. It's busy, but everything is clearly visible. You know what everything is, you can see everything. And right here, there's no lens flares or anything, it's just a bunch of models standing around at the top of a piece of scenery. Gorgeous battlescape. And of course, while I'm here, I can't pass up showing off one of my favorite dark Eldar images. This is by far one of my favorite dark Eldar images. I think it pretty much perfectly captures everything I love about the dark Eldar. There's so much of a sense of speed and emotion going on in this picture. It's like it was captured in just a brief instant of a raging battle that was going on. You can see the the exaggerated horns and armor and the, the pistol and the, the weaponry they use. There's the long stakes in the background and the tortured captives and whatnot fading off into the distance. The, the look of pain on the civilian's face and it's just, it, this is to me what like the Dark Elder should feel like. It's a very fast-paced, very visceral, very violent, but at the same time, beautiful. And now, to contrast, I would like to pull out the 8th uh, the edition rulebook and have a look at some of the, the battlescapes and the, the pieces of art in there. This is the one that the the book opens up to, and we can we can examine this closely as we can see is uh, there's lots of glow effects in the background that might be done by a by a light that might be done in post production. There's there's fog added. Uh, everything beyond this first line right here isn't clearly visible. These are a uh, Lord of Skulls, I believe they're called, and a, a soul grinder back there. But from the perspective of the photo, it's not clearly visible what's beyond these these space marines here. If we look at, at this picture back here, uh, it's meant to be an action shot with this uh, with this berserker and his berserker brethren and the land raider going into battle against these. Uh, I believe they're, uh, they're, they're Kriegers, perhaps. And a bunch of Space Marines behind them, but it's it's difficult to tell. There's just so much fog and special effects at it. It all becomes muddy. Here we see a, a Bloodthirster with a bunch of corn demons and everything behind it. Once again, I think believe there's, there's some Valkyries in the background, but those are clearly not actual models and it's difficult to tell what is actually a model beyond say the uh, the first the, the, up, the upfront frame of the photo um, and the same carries on pretty much through the rest of the book it, there's lots and lots of models that are just completely out of frame or out of focus as meant to evoke the image of a larger battlescape, but what it actually does is just sort of create a sense of unrealistic proportions of the of the of the battle, um, or at least of the tabletop game, because you've got these very static miniatures in front, and then in the background you've got these sort of blurred images of other models that may or may not even be there um, in cityscapes that are most definitely superimposed. And down here you have, you have fog machine effects and, uh, and pieces of terrain that may or may not actually be there. What this does is it creates a sense of, uh, of disingenuousness 
when it comes to the modeling aspect because when you have this much special effect, when you have this many special effects, when you have this much uh, post-production touch-ups done to the picture, it's difficult to tell whether or not what you're looking at is something that someone has actually hobbied or something that someone has added in uh, after the fact. Uh, let me see if I can find another good example. And it's not all bad. I mean, I'm, I am actually very, very fond of this particular picture of the craft world. The, uh, the avatar of Cain added in the background, I think, is a bit superfluous. Really, all you need is just this picture of the craft world, because this is one of those pictures that, like I said, um, it's not meant to be so much a literal interpretation as it's meant to be um, evocative of certain feelings. This is a completely surreal and alien, almost living organism of a ship. You're not meant to truly understand how it operates because it is alien. You're meant to sort of fill in the gaps with your own imagination. But this is a good example of the of the artwork that you'll find um, in the eighth edition rulebook. It's a clearly done digital picture of a Necron. There's not a whole lot going on. He takes up both pages of the frame, but uh, the actual source of his attention, the the energy crystal, is actually crudely chopped off at the top of the picture, as is his energy staff at the bottom. So all that's left is sort of this, this dead eye stare and it's, the focus appears to be on what is like, it, it's oddly framed. You, you have text over here that there's this blank spot and then you have text over here which appears to be behind him. It doesn't, there wasn't a lot of attention done to this particular picture but this is supposed to be the centerpiece clearly This isn't bad. I do like the orcs. I like the orc aesthetic very much. And this towel's shot right down here. It's great because it shows off the proportions. It gives a, it gives a sense of a relationship to the different towel suits. And this shot right here is very nice. It gives off the, the sense of what the warfare is like from the guard perspective in the 40, 41st millennium. Now this is a picture much more reminiscent of the 5th edition codex. You can see the Primera Space Marines very clearly. You can see the Dreadnought, the Captain, everyone gathered around on a, on a hobby table there's no special effects added. Everything is clearly visible. It's a very small picture, but nonetheless. And this is another good example of that. This is from the Death from the Skies series of, uh, of rules. Everything is very clearly modeled. The background is, is chopped off, but everything is obviously on a piece of actual physical terrain. Um, everything is within the frame. It's focused on. It's in the shot. Nothing is cropped out. Nothing is superimposed. But the majority of the book is stuff like this. You got this. This, this isn't even a fog machine at this point. This is just them adding in this sort of blur effect to the background. I'm pretty sure at least a few of these screamers were copy and pasted. Um, I'm not actually sure this tank is there because it's got like an ethereal glow to it, the same as the fog. Um, these screamers are translucent. Um, these pieces of bulwark are probably not there. I'm not actually sure what they're standing on. That Helldrake isn't there. But this is more what I'm talking about. It create. It's not... It's not representative of the hobby at this point. At this point, it's just them fooling around in a computer trying to show off different models that 
it, it, it produces a sense of, um, it's not realistic. This isn't something that you could expect to see on a hobby board. And the artwork, too, has uh, shifted in tone. Whereas before you had these beautiful impressionist uh, pieces of art in the form of watercolors and such that were gross exaggerations of what it was like to be a certain um, um, occult mechanicus or um, an adeptus ministorum or whatever. Now you've got these very literal... Um, depictions of a plague marine here's a beautiful piece right here but most of it if it's not copy and pasted art it's just very literal and straightforward Pictures like this are probably the worst offenders, in my opinion. It's just a Primaris Marine standing on an alien landscape. There's nothing particularly special about it. It was clearly done in a, in a computer. You've got sort of comic book drawings like that. But once again, it's all very literal. There's no exaggeration. There's no... Um, he doesn't have scripture stapled to his face or anything like that. It's, you know, this is clearly something that's just sort of happening in the field. You have these very crisp, clean images. I mean, I don't know what kind of feeling this picture is supposed to evoke. They de dedicated half of a page to it. Clearly, it's supposed to be important, but... I don't know what's going on. I don't frankly care. This is more along the lines of what I enjoy. Something like this is more inspirational because you're not sure quite what's going on, but you get the idea. You get the picture. And you can see the fire in the back. This is very reminiscent of the pile of space marines. In fact, Yes, it's the, uh, except you can actually see what they're fighting in this frame. This is one of the... Uh, I'm not particularly fond of this. This may, at first glance, seem like sort of the Walder colors, but... Probably there's just not a whole lot going on. It's just a bunch of chest-high pictures of primary Space Marines. You've got Gilliman, you've got Grayfax in the background, you've got Celestine up there. I know Galarius call. Oh, it's just all of the super friends gathered together for a chest high shot as they're wading through God knows what, doing God knows what, in God knows where. It's not important. This beautiful picture was relegated to less than half a page. This is very nice, though. This one in particular. It's probably one of my favorite pictures from the entire codex. I was from the entire uh, eighth edition of the book. But most of it is just sort of muddled. Or it's very crisp and clean, and there's not much to show off. Like here, I'm not exactly sure what's supposed to be happening here. You got pictures of Primaris Marines, you got a, a chaos. Uh, it's mostly just chest high pictures. Guys in the background. It's not really an image of the, what they're doing or where they're going. There's no burning city in the background or anything to give any sort of context. There's not really any religious symbolism. There's not, you know, the framing is a little awkward. They're not Technically bad pictures, they're just not particularly inspirational.
This one's not bad. I actually really like it. Because it does have stuff going on that gives it context as to what's going on in the battle. You've got layers. You've got the, the aerial battle going on, the city battle right there. We've got the, the super heavy apocalyptic style battle with the with the titans and whatnot. And you've got the, the ordinary dudes lined up with the space marines fighting chaos. But yeah, that's what I wanted to show. It's mostly just the differences. And this is mostly the difference in that, not just the um, the artwork. Although the artwork is more or less invocative of the differences between the actual editions themselves. Um, but you had a very hobby and player oriented 5th edition versus the very uh, salesmanship kind of a, uh, you know, of a 8th edition. Just lots of unnecessary effects unnecessary uh, unnecessarily clean pictures and I like the 5th edition book because it gave a lot of images with I want to say heart like this is a just a picture of a space marine Somewhat like those uh, those pictures of the space marines I showed off in the in the eighth edition book, but it's distinctly different. There's a the perspective is entirely different. It's it's pointed upwards. It's, it's a heroic image, but it's also somewhat propagandistic. You're not expected as a player, as someone who who's following the Lord, to necessarily take this at face value. You've got images like this down here, and these are just small quarter of the page images, but um, like the, the massive sea where it just sort of devolves into just this, this smoke and fire and the upward facing angle, and it's not just chest high dudes. And the, the the frequent use of the banners and such. It's all, it evokes a sort of symbolism. It evokes a sort of uh, an idea more than it is like a literal interpretation of what's going on. The, the exaggerated legs of the guardsman as he's wading through uh, the barbed wire and decay of wherever he is there. I could point to any given piece of art in this book, and it would be the same feeling. Uh, you can't say the same thing of the 8th edition book. And this is what I liked about the old Warhammer, was it was very much steeped in fantasy and about you creating your dudes. Everything about it was very much, um, you know, how I heard it. And um, not everything was set in stone. There was established lore and canon, sure, but you didn't have to take it at face value. In fact, you were encouraged not to. Uh, you were encouraged in this book, for instance, to make up your own rules. Um, fill in the gaps where you felt that the, the rules needed filling in and such. With the uh, almost bi-weekly rules updates with the 8th edition. It's a very clear Games Workshop doesn't really want you making up your own rules. They will be more than happy to fill those gaps in for you and uh, make it extremely difficult, by the way, to keep up with all the different changes in the meantime. But yeah, I'm very, very happy with this purchase. And this is... I'm, I'm very happy with it because this is one of the... Uh, this is full of all the inspirational artwork. And all of the inspirational um, uh, tabletop settings and army pictures and such that um, got me really hooked on this hobby uh, to begin with. The 7th edition Dark Eldar Codex was a bit of a letdown specifically because it didn't have this kind of stuff that I've been looking up online and had become accustomed to 
by the time I actually started playing. I didn't start playing until I was at least a year into the hobby. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very fond of these old rule books, of these old uh, codexes too. Um, if you ever happen upon, if you're into this older stuff and you ever happen upon a fifth edition rule book, I highly recommend you pick it up, especially if it's in good shape because the artwork in these things is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the third edition rulebook, I would say as well, is also a very good piece uh, to pick up, as are the third and fourth edition codexes. Um, I don't actually have any fifth edition codexes, but I would imagine they would be of the same quality. But anyway, uh, that was me wanting to show off this little find that I had and show off some of the different reasons as to why um, I, prefer, I just prefer the aesthetic of the older 40k to the newer one. I just, I like the modeling um, aspect. I like the rules aspect. And I definitely, definitely love the artwork. And with that, this is Tiger's Lost the Second out.